Cheers, everyone. Princess of the Bear here. We're back at Epcot because it's time to get thirsty. We got lots of drinks on our list to drink. Yes, we're talking about beverages. Get out of our DMs. Let's go show you the drinks of the International Food and Wine Festival 2023. Be sure to drink all the drinks. You heard the girl. Connections Festival drink. It is a tequila drink with a very special kind of triple sack. Vegan. Loving it. It's kind of like a tequila sunrise, but light on the orange juice, which I'm here for. I really like this a lot. I'm gonna give it a four out of five tequilas. It's, it's a good time. This is like the pre-Mexico drink. Because you always start in Mexico. I have absolutely nothing to say about Mexican comment. It feels like bait. I will not be tricked. Maybe tomorrow. Tequila is a horrible way to start to get Epcot. Take it from a professional. Don't start with tequila. Get a beer if you want to. An old fashioned something. Don't start with tequila. It feels like something that belongs in Flower and Garden. Just the way the citrus hits, it's really refreshing. It's things like this that, for, especially with the Connections Cafe, that never, never made sense to me. Like, they're specialty items that you get for the festival, and uh, like the desserts and movie things they have in here are unique and interesting when everything else here is not. Even if they're not great, the fact is they're interesting. We come here for those things. I just wish Connections itself had food that was this interesting all the time. As far as a drink, the four to five calls. I would consume copious amounts of these. Copious. And here we have the Sufi, I think that's how you pronounce it, champagne from Coastal Eats. <laughs> This is like the perfect mimosa champagne, but I would rather, I'd like like some pog juice in it. That, if it was not overcast, I would be dying. Three out of five champagnes. It's never too early in the day for champagne. It's never too late in the day for champagne. Which is to say, there's never a bad time for champagne. Like ever. I swear these things get taller every year. Same on alcohol, but taller. It's nice, it's crisp, it's refreshing. It would pair well with some seafood. And lots of coastal eats. Not terrible. Three and a half out of five plus. A returning favorite, the Cape Cotter with our vegan Blair and Boyd vodka. This one's more juice than anything, but I dig it. I will give it a four out of five Cape Cotters. It's Cape Cotting. Chill on the coast with a cocktail. Cape Cotter, same as it was last year, it hasn't changed, it's no different, but uh, why not revisit some old favorites? I don't remember if this was a favorite or not. I don't think it was. I don't think I loved it last year. I thought it was okay last year. Either way, maybe things have changed. They had it. It tastes like cough medicine with a hint of alcohol. Mmm. That's in chilled down my spine, not the good kind either. Two out of five plus. Same with champagne. This is the Sugatuck Fair. I think I said that right. You definitely have to be careful with this brand of brewing company. Not all of their beers are vegan. This one is though. A good portion of them are not. So just make sure you check before you try. Tastes like a chocolate fire. I really like that. I'm not usually a dark beer person, but I'm into this one. I'm kind of sad that I spilled some of it. I'm gonna give it three and a half out of five. Yeasties. It's tasty. 
all you really had to do was say fire and I was on board. Smoky, charred, all those things. I want those condensed, distilled, and dripping through beer, which is what it smells like. It smells like bonfire after the rain. There's no poetry there. That's just what it smells like. So. It's definitely like a stout. So if uh, you have a problem with like stouts, smell like very like heavy dark beers, it's gonna be for you. It's kind of bitter, never from the other ones we've had in the past, but it's got a little drinkability to it. Like it goes down smooth, it's just got a bitter aftertaste. I would give it three and a half out of five plus. Already know what season it is, because if it's food and wine season, it's swine brine season, bay beef. As a nod to our friend, Sean Orlando, it's always swine brine season in our hearts. Every year, this is a must. Last year, I think I did seven, eight. I'm probably gonna double that number this year, if my heart allows for it. Just dip that nice piece of roasted pork in there, the Jim Beam, the apple cider. It's like coming home after you've been away for a few years, even though it's only really been 12 months. Mm. Of course, we gotta take a bite. Except no substitutes. Never disappointed. Five out of five flaws. It's always on the very test of this. For all of you who I have somehow convinced to go try this beverage, I am not sorry. Lee's salty dog cocktail. It tastes like a marg with extra syrup and I don't like it. It's like a one and a half out of five salty dogs. I don't want this dog in my life. This dog can go to the dog catcher. Salty Dog Cocktail, I remember this from last year. I remember despising this beverage. I don't understand why it exists or who would willingly drink this. If you are a Salty Dog fan and you're in our community, I need you to explain yourself in great detail in the comments. I'm not gonna make fun of you, I promise. I really wanna hear why you would drink this. Is it a hair of the dog? Is it a casual beach drink? Is this something you're, you're sitting there patio doing with your pals? Let me know why I should consume this thing. Knowing very well I don't like it, here I am trying it again. Would my people say you get the dog in them? That's what they mean by this. In all the bad ways. That is not a pleasant experience. I don't even really feel like it's meant to be enjoyed. I feel like it's meant to be endured. I'm not that kind of drinker. Two out of five plus. So here we have a beautiful salt and lime lager. Hopefully this is better than a salt and lime cocktail. Oh yeah, definitely better. Um, lighter, not salty or limey. I actually like this a lot. I'm gonna give it a four out of five yeasties. This is a delicious light beer. See, salt and lime in a beer, that's something I can get behind. That's giving me beachside Corona vibes. That's something that's more my vibe. Something a little bit slower and more chill. Something I'm not going to regret. See, that's nice and mellow. That's deserving of having your toes in the sand and nobody to bother you for at least four to six hours. Three and a half out of five hours. the Bold Rock Peachberry Hard Cider. All of their ciders are vegan, so you don't have to worry when it comes to Bold Rock, <laughs> as I spill all over myself. Ooh, that's really like light and refreshing. Really good, like sippable drink for outside. I like that. I'm gonna give it three and a half out of five ciders. Ciderific. 
it's been fun to see the evolution of cider, specifically here at Epcot. Obviously, outside of theme parks, ciders have exploded in like the last few years as far as variety and flavors. Epcot, honestly, especially during food and wine, should really be called the Food, Cider, and Wine Festival because their ciders collection is starting to get kind of epic. Worldly, even. Ooh, that's good. Mmm. The fruit is subtle, but it still provides that sweetness. It's like an, like an overly sweet one. It doesn't feel like you're drinking juice. And it's nice and crisp on the backside. I could drink this all day in Captain America style. Four and a half out of five plus. We have the Raspberry Lemonade Hard Cider, another cider. We're just going all in cider and brewing this time, I suppose. I'm not mad at that. I was going to get the pickle shake, but it's probably more dairy than I can handle. I had a lot of dairy today so far. Cheers. You know, I wasn't expecting so much lemonade out of that. Anything that's just like a lemonade beer or lemonade cider is usually lemonade light. But this smashes the tartness while still retaining that raspberry. As a lemonade fan, I think I'm in love. 4.75 out of 5 plus. I think I punished myself on purpose because Blake's hard ciders are all 100% vegan, so I knew this one was safe. But it's a Trophy Colada. Beer? I expect some coconut. Oh man, that's a mistake. I'm gonna have to convince you. That is coconut. That that's not for me. If you like coconut and tropical things, you will love this. For me, it's like a two out of five coladas. It really does taste like a piña colada, which is not my jam. No. Tropicolata is a name. You could have just stopped there. That tells me already everything I do want to know and don't want to know about what's in this cup. As always, the channel motto is we commit to our mistakes. I'm feeling like my inner anger right now. How could you ruin beer? Pineapp coconut, colada, no. No, 1.5 out of 5 plus. Why would you do that to a person? I don't just drink suntan lotion. Three daughters brewing. Old fashioned porter. Now, three daughters, I'm speaking directly to you. Anybody out there that knows anybody that works three daughters, who's manning your email box? Because I've been able been unable to confirm that some of your beers are vegan or not, but nobody ever seems to respond to our emails. I don't get a hold of you. Help me help you. Old fashioned porter? Is it old fashioned or is it an old fashioned porter? I guess we're gonna find out. That is interesting. It's definitely an old fashioned, as in like the cocktail sort of porter, but it's very subtle. And it lends us this weird drinkability. It's definitely like a slow sipper. It's not something you're going to get and drink in like the pathway between this stand and the next, but it's good. Three and a half out of five plus. This is the flyaway margarita. Why is it called flyaway? Well, I'll tell you. Because it is using Lenny Kravitz's tequila. Now, Lenny Kravitz did something very special with his tequila. He does not use agave. He uses what you call a desert spoon plant to make his tequila. That's why it tastes so different. 
So this one has got a couple of different liqueurs, but that's the main one, the Lenny Kravitz one, which is why it's the fly away. Let's see how a non-agave tequila compares to an agave tequila. Very sweet. It's almost like a mint on the back end to it. I'm really into it, but I don't think I would proactively get this. I think this is like a one and done, like I'm just gonna try this to try it style drink. It's not, I'm gonna come here and get this every time drink. Two and a half out of five Lenny Kravitz's. Makes me wanna fly away from this drink. Desert spoon, huh? Who am I gonna be spooning after I drink this? Well, it is tequila, so. Spooning is platonic. I don't know if I told you that. Spooning is platonic. If I need to spoon the, the bottle, I can do that. Spoon this pyramid, I can do that too. Spoon the mouse. His nose is kind of pointy, but we can probably make it work. Interesting. It's a very unique tasting drink. Margarita, if you will. It has like the... It's like a, a lighter smoky than like a mezcal, but more tart than say like agave. It like sits somewhere in the middle. But I don't know if it's like a good middle or a bad middle. It's like being lost in a desert almost. Will you drink it if it's there? You will. But would you proactively order it? That's the question. Because of that, I'm on the fence. Two and a half out of five plus. So when you tell me this drink is called Trouble in Paradise, is this Trouble in Paradise or are you calling me Trouble in Paradise? Because either way, you're probably right. Uh, mezcal is always a good way to go. Uh, lime juice, some other things in here, tahini rim, spicy tahini rim. Yeah, it's spicy. This is it good though? Ooh, very sweet. Like melted Jolly Rancher sweet. Now, it's unconfirmed, vegan, to known for the princess. Honestly, even if she could, I don't think she'd like it anyway. It's just way too sweet. Like, worse than like a frozen, like strawberry or frozen watermelon, like margarita, way too sweet. It's definitely trouble in none of the positive ways. Mexico, I don't know what you're doing this year. Two out of five plus. Tropic Hele Sparkling Wine. All of their um, drinks are vegan. They actually ran out of this yesterday, so I'm glad that we came the next day to get this, because we would have been burnt if we came last night when I actually wanted to come here. It's a nice, flavorful, sparkling wine. It's not too, like, uh, carbonated and it's got like a nice like balance of wine to it. I'm into it, it's kind of like a rosé jam. I'm gonna give it three and a half out of five sparkling wines. A sparkling wine. It's good to find another another place that is all vegan wine. There's another place I can buy something from the store, for the princess. I'm probably not gonna be able to find any of this anywhere because it's an India booth, but I'm excited either way. That is very crisp. Very, uh, it's like pairing the acidic with the sweet. They meet somewhere in the middle. Sort of cancel each other out. To where I get like tingle but very little flavor. I don't love it. Honestly, I'm not a fan. Two to five plus. So here we have from the same company, the Chinon Blanc. Cheers. Much more whiny and tasty. I like that. I would give it a three out of five white grapes. It's decent. It's not my favorite. 
of the Chant Blanc, different level of pour. But maybe this one have a little bit more flavor. Same winery. So let's see how we do. So I can unbar with that. It's crisp, but it comes crisp with some flavor. Like two leverage of profile. A lot more fruit forward. A lot more. I, I'm, I'm, I'm loving the drinkability. I'm feeling like it's obviously not gonna compare to like your French wine. Tell me that it's coming from India. This is a strong showing. Three and a half out of five plus. prank on me. We always end up at Refreshment Outpost every festival because even though it doesn't seem there's a reason to stop at Refreshment Outpost, they always have the most unique beers every festival. And also, they're full-size beers. Not dinky festival beers, full-size beers for basically the same price as you get a large one at one of the booths. But are you brave enough? Ooh, that is golden. And a crispy bread. No pranks there, it's all love. I haven't had something this tasty. This is my first sip of Victory Gold Monkey. I'm in love. It's gonna be my beer of the festival. 4.75 out of 5 pods. This one, got potential. I brought out the phone for this one. The princess got this to me as a treat or torture, depending on how you want to do it. But I have raved and raved on this channel every festival so about beers whose name is too long. So stick with me now. Gulfstream Brewing Company Cloud9 Watermelon Hibiscus Ale. I know, I know the only reason Princess got this for me is watermelon in it. So that's what the real prank was. This. This wine coolery looking watermelon ocean trap, whatever this is. She's hunting bears, and I feel like I got caught. Actually, the hibiscus with the watermelon, mild, sort of like, takes out that floral of the hibiscus while sort of mellowing out the watermelon. So it's very simple. Uh, I wouldn't order a ton of these, but it's actually pretty drinkable. Quite refreshing. Beers and refreshment outposts this year ain't missing. Four out of five plus. This is the Dr. Low non-alcoholic Riesling. I'm not gonna lie, I've been the most excited for this drink of all of the drinks that I looked up for food and wine that were vegan. This one's also organic. Their entire line is organic and vegan which I'm super excited for. Now the cast member did remind us that it isn't zero, zero alcohol. There is a 0.5%, so you still don't want to give it to anybody under the age of 21, but it is still nice to have like a, a low to no alcohol drink. And it tastes like a Riesling. It's really tasty, nice and sweet. I could pair it with some good food. I like this. This is a four and a half out of five Rieslings. Give me a bigger glass, please. If you're gonna dose me, you do it low. I'm glad that they're starting to offer either low alcohol or the zero proof alcohol beverages here at the festival. There's some people that don't like to drink. We appreciate it trying to represent more of you on this channel, so stay tuned because there will be more of this. And why not low alcohol wine? You don't see a whole lot of that. And it tastes like a Riesling. Very interesting, very sippable, very light. You would never know the difference if nobody told you. Three and a half out of five claws. So here we have the Selbach Oster Riesling. Now this one is not vegan, but I wanted to do a comparison to the non-alcoholic or low-alcohol Riesling to like the actual Riesling. 
a little bit different in color. I actually poured a little bit more, but beggars will be choosers. Same sort of flavor. This is a bit more bitter. I honestly think the low alcohol one's smoother. This is a nice sippable. But we're always gonna ask for bigger glasses. It's just who we are. Three out of five plus. The only vegan thing at the Flavors of America stand, we left hand brewing Sawtooth Amber Ale. I'm glad the bear got me a tiny one. Oh, way too strong. I don't like it. It's like a one out of five hops. Now, not all of their beers are vegan, so just make sure you watch which ones you get. This one happens to be, and I wish it wasn't. Take this left hand brew with my left hand. Sawtooth is giving me Horizon Zero Dawn vibes. I'm not complaining about that. If you know what I'm talking about, let me know in the comments. If you don't, go about your day. Either way, I'm excited. It is, uh, got a high ABV. It's very bitter. Not IPA bitter, but it, it's up there. Do I feel like it's sawing in the inside of my mouth? Metaphorically? Probably. Uh, it's a special kind of person something like that. If you're an IPA drinker, you're probably gonna enjoy that. If not, if you happen to be in most IPAs or garbage camp, like myself, you're probably gonna hate it. Two and a half out of five plus. So here we have the Dreamland American Lager, which is not vegan. It's got cornflakes in it. Interesting enough, dreamy maybe. Let's find out. It's very interesting. It's got like some complexity to it, but it's still really light. Like think if like you were drinking like a, almost like the stout, like sort of that weight, but it's a lager, so it's nice and crisp. It tastes substantial. I don't know how else to describe that, but it's still better than Bud Light. Three out of five plus. We have the sake passion cocktail. I'm assuming passion fruit and sake in a cocktail in a glass. So this is also not confirmed vegan, so I'm princess more for me. Sake me. I don't know what I'm talking about. Sake to me? Sake, no. It's a sake cocktail. And I'm not gonna say not some no to sake ever. If I do, sock me. Ooh. It's heavy in the passion fruit. I just missed an orange and guava. It needs more sake. Because all I taste is juice. It's like a juicy juice with no sake. Now it's pre-mixed, so it's coming to expect. Some of these pre-mixed cocktails are on the little weak side. Buyer beware. I'm giving this two and a half out of five bars. The moon only water sake. Another one of these little golden cups. The princess will probably try to take home if I let her. Yes, please. We shall see. Uh, but this is also unconfirmed vegan now. In case you guys wonder, we do a lot of research, the princess mostly, uh, emailing these companies to see if they get answers back on whether or not their beverages are vegan. There are lots of different things in the refining process and filtering process that ends up making these not vegan, along with sugar. We haven't heard back on this one. So honestly, we don't know. More for me. It's a very floral sake, but drinkable. I kind of like it. I feel like there's a moon calming me over the water. Three out of five plus. that they used to have 
at the Greece Pavilion. But this wine is amazing. I like that. I will give it a no, wait for a four out of five wines. I would drink like a couple of these. This is like a nice, like dry tart. That's perfect for a day out in the sun. This is part 186 of us uh, butchering names of things that should probably spend more time trying to pronounce. The Kiriani Nusa Zina Marvo Dry Red. It's another name way too long. All you know is dry red in Greece. So we got it. She got it what? She's getting it drink. Oh, okay. It's dry. Very dry. And red. The glow's definitely nice. Got some layers to it. A little fruit forward. Tartness. I like it. Three and a half out of five falls. This is the Blake's Hard Cider Peach Party. All of Blake's Hard Ciders are vegan. Joy. Oh wow. Wow, that's peachy. That's really peachy. That's like peach snobs peachy. That is unexpectedly good. I like that a lot. I'm giving it a four and a half out of five peaches. It's peaches, 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 out. Peach party hard cider. You had me at party. We're gonna do it. Hard. Ooh. We find more and more ciders creeping away in this festival. Not a complaint in any way, shape, or form, because they get better every year. This is literally a peach party, like the appropriate amount of peach. I was trying to think too sugary or syrupy, but it's got that nice little bite to it. That is good. Four and a half out of five claws. Get you three of these. Kill Farms Red Sperry Citrus Hard Ale. All of their beers are 100% vegan. Let's go, Keel Farms, let's go. Oh, that's really nice. I like that. It's, it's slightly artificial tasting, but not too bad. It's like a good raspberry. I like it. I will give it a four out of five raspberries. It's tasty. Raspberry and citrus in a hard cider. Why does it gotta be a hard cider? At this point, you just call it a cider. So many of these ciders are alcohol at this point. You don't need to add the adjective hard for me to believe you. Just give it to me in a cup. I'm gonna drink it anyway. It reminds me of something I can't quite place. Actually, there it goes. The Welch's sparkling grape drink, grape juice, it's like that. I don't taste anything else. All I got in my mind right now is Welch's. Two and a half out of five plus. stand for you and I'm excited for it. Chocolatey. It's like a dessert beer. I'm kind of mad that I got such a tall one because it's gonna be really hard to finish. Three out of five beers. This is some some like garden colo bread beer. Hey look it's dark like me. I like my beers. I want to look at my beer and feel like I'm looking into a mirror. That's what I truly want in life. On a list of like 50 other things. It's good. Surprisingly good. I had my doubts. I don't drink a whole lot of Brazilian beer, but this, this get me on board. This is, it reminds me of like, a Brazilian Guinness, but easier to drink. Much smoother, much less bitter. Not quite as heavy, but halfway there. Think like a dunkle. That's about where you are. 
3.75 out of 5 plus. It's worthy of drinking around the world. This is your Grand Marne slush, the only item I could confirm vegan at the France town. We'll see if it's better than the pink slush. Oh. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that. It's a little too... Maybe, maybe it's because it's melted. Like, the vodka just doesn't mix well with the juices that were chosen and it's just not that good. I'm gonna give it a two out of five. Cosmos, it's not the best. I don't know if you guys know this, but on the World Showcase, in Epcot, France slush game is usually untouchable. So when they put out a slush, I usually expect it's going to be the toppest of the top tier. Let's see if they can withhold that title or hold on to that title. Here's the thing. That has the potential to be just as good, if not better, than most of the slushies they have at the old crepe stand out in front of France. The problem is, is that it's so not slushy, I feel like things separated. And it's not getting its just due. It's an execution thing. Mind you, it's also hotter than Satan's tan outside. Things don't keep what they normally do. This, I would like to try again when it's fully slushed. As it is right now, because that's how we rate things. We rate them as they come. It's a two out of five plus. Waste of potential. This one has potential. We have the strawberry rose. Now, I expect this to be Another pre-mixed mistake, but they actually mix this right in front of you. So they poured everything in here, and this is a delightful looking color. And let's see if it makes me feel rosy inside, because honestly, as a bear, I'm a sucker for anything rosé in the title. If you don't believe me, go back and watch your old videos. I am a rosé freak, and I am not ashamed of that. Ooh. That is the right balance of the orange juice and the strawberry, with just enough of the rosé. Honestly, they should have this year round. It's a nice, solid beverage. Less pre-mixed drinks, more made to order. Three, no, I'm gonna give it a four and a half out of five plus. Four and a half. Four and a half. Now, there's a little bit of bear bias in there, because remember, I love rosé. Everybody else is probably gonna be closer to three and a half, 3.75 out of five plus. Collective Arts Visual Sound Logger, I think is what it's called. I feel like, even though it says it's new for, for Food & Wine, I feel like we had this for Festival of the Arts. I'm pretty like, I'm like 99% sure that this was a Festival of the Arts, but is new to Food & Wine type situation. Like, new, but not new new. It's very familiar tasting, but also extremely hoppy, not for the the new beer drinkers, that's for sure. It's more like a, like a Newcastle nutty. I will give it two and a half out of five yeasties. It's not my jam, but it's also not my beer, so I'm okay with not drinking the whole thing and only taking a sip. Mm -hmm. Collective Arts started to be one of those things that we encounter regularly on this channel and we were always up for new things. Beer as art is something that I can get down with. Oh, it was a beautiful cup of chilled deliciousness amongst the trees in Canada. That's where you actually start every trip around World Showcase. Oh, lies! You're happy to be wrong in the comments. This is a nice, complex beer. It's a bit better than drinking, say, like, a Bud Light. It's got 
got some layers to it, it's got some flavor to it. It's nice and crisp and refreshing. I really can't go wrong with that. Three and a half out of five plus. The return of the mimosa flight. We're starting off with the, I believe this is a tropical mimosa flight. Don't get me wrong. What's this, blood orange? Mm. Blood orange is the orange. One of these is pog juice, one of these is blood orange. Wait, pog juice is the orange one. That's this is, blood orange. This is probably blood orange. I smell, no, there's a hint of citrus in it. It's definitely a blood orange. Blood orange is sparkling wine. Uh, most of the wines in here are unconfirmed. They don't list what uh, sparkling wines are in here. So none of the press is more for me. So, a flight. Find somewhere. Yeah, it's definitely blood orange. Strong citrus, not very sparkling. It's more citrus than is anything else. It doesn't feel like most of that. Feels like somebody's ratio is way off. Instead of being like, Champagne and juice. It's like juice and champagne. It's off. Two out of five plus. Next up, we have the berry mimosa. This is probably one I'm gonna like the most. Probably. Nope, I lied. Again, mostly juice. It's like drinking a Capri Sun without the cool package. Also, a two out of five plus. If I wanted juice, I would just order juice. What's the point of drinking that? I wonder. Last up, we have the tropical mosa. Sparkling wine, mint, mint, passion fruit, orange, and guava. Pog juice without saying pog juice. Some of you have ruined pog juice and mosas from us. Uh, I know you've been asking for names. I'm waiting on that. For now, I will take pog juice while we can still get it. It's not very many places. You want a true pog juice mosa? Honestly, I don't know where you can get one right now. Because the last couple places we've asked and said Boma. no. Boma. Boma? Boma's the last one? Yeah, Boma breakfast. We need to go back. We haven't been in a while. Just like bog juice. I literally just said like bog juice. These are probably all pre-mixed. To the detriment. I'm giving it also a 2 out of 5 plus. Uh, it is mimosa prices on a juice budget. I'm giving the whole thing a two. So you'll be upset about that. But it is what it is. So I'm trying to redeem mimosas at Epcot by getting a blood orange mimosa from the Morocco Pavilion because they actually have a bar here that gives you blood orange mimosas. I want to see if it's better or worse than shivering sips. We're going to find out. Okay, see that tingles. That is a mimosa. Is it the ratio that I would like? No. But it's a thousand times better than what you get a shimmering set. Are you really want a mozi? Skip that, get this. Three and a half out of five plus. This is an orange sparkling wine, not champagne, just sparkling wine. Ooh. It doesn't taste very orangey. Oh, peach, my bad. Not orange, it's peach. But does not taste, pe taste peachy either. It just tastes like a sparkling beverage. There's not a lot of flavor to it. It's just meh. I'm gonna give it a one and a half out of five fake champagnes, because it's definitely fake champagne. So as I hide behind this book here, I gotta understand how the prince has got to mix up. Florida orange groves, winery, sparkling peach, from St. Petersburg, Florida. That's a lot, okay? Uh, why would you even bother to put Florida orange groves in your name if you're gonna serve peach sparkling wine? Now obviously the only reason it's not champagne, it's not from the Champagne region of France, Let's not get into that elitist nonsense. It sparkles Rude? and it's wine. Is it not elitist? No. You're hoarding your name champagne because 
French. Of an area in France. It's all sparkling. If it's good, it's good. If it's trash, it's trash. And you know how we do it here. We commit our mistakes. No? It's quite good. I like the peach, but honestly, I think it's not sparkling enough. It's not crisp enough. It's more sweet than crisp. A little bit more sparkle. And I might be on board. It might be something special. As it is right now, uh, it's average. I'm gonna give it a two and a half out of five claws. There are better drinks around World Showcase than this. Boulevard Brewing Cider is 100, a 100% vegan brewery. Don't have to worry about any of their flavors. They're all good. Oh, good lord. Pineapple much? This is like Dole Whip personified in a cider. I, I don't like it. I don't, I don't know, sir. I don't like it. It's a one and a half out of five pineapples. I'm probably gonna sacrifice this to Bear and force him to drink the whole thing. I'm not gonna lie. This looks like one of you went and got one of those fake piss kits before you get to apply for a job. I'm just saying, I'm calling it like I see it. If I was standing next to you and you were taking a piss test, you might fail automatically. Either way, I'm excited for this one. Princess hated it, that means I'm gonna love it. She said pineapple, and pineapple is my magic word. It's not my safe word, but it's my magic word. It's like Ace, Ace Pineapple beer. Ooh, we about to have fun. I feel like I just opened a chest in the Legend of Zelda game. This is my new bay. Bay every day. This is better than the pineapple wine you can get at the Hawaii booth that isn't open yet, by the way. Um, I want this injected straight in my veins. I want an IV so I can walk around with little wheels. It's, I'll walk around with a roller showcase with an IV of this. Mmm, got the aftertaste, straight pineapple. I love it. It's a five out of five cause to bear necessities. If you love pineapple, get this. If you hate pineapple, mm, I don't know what's wrong with you, but you're probably gonna feel like the princess feels. Rude. It's a little rude. But I like what I like. It's like you people that like Starlight Rays Cafe. Sometimes you just like what you like. What better place to end our drink escapades than here at the brew ring with the brew professors here? So we can imbibe of the things or reflect on the imbibing of the things. There's been a lot of unique drinks this festival, a lot more ciders, a lot of good beers. We want to know what you guys think. Do you want to see more exotic things? Do you want to see more experiments? Or you want more actual cocktails and less beers? I'm here for the experimental. It's definitely been a fun time. If there's anything that you want us to come back that we missed, by all means let us know. There are other booths opening in August, September that we gotta hit anyway. If there's anything else you want to see between now and then, well, let us know in the comments. If there's anything else you'd like to see us do, of course, in the comments is always gonna be a place to find us. Hit that notification bell if you want to see other videos like this and we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday. We'll see you soon. Be sure to subscribe and comment. Those are my people. But you heard the girl. Worse than bear. You're worse. And they're going off now. You don't want to hear that. <laughs>